Don't get caught in the mosh pit The fuel to the fire Ain't nobody can stop it the Trouble in my city But you know I'm across it Got a 40 on my hip And I'm liable to spark it Throw down these hits My click is indivisible I aim you duck I squeeze now you invisible I'm not afraid of getting physical All these different chemicals Are fogging up my visuals Bloods on my hands Got slugs on my gunners Yo we notorious We ain't no runners Bloods on my hands Got slugs on my gunners Yo we some warriors They ain't caught gunners Bloods on my hands Got slugs on my gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Put on my sweat, put on the beat, put on the map, put on my team Take out every motherfucker in between, know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my rap, better my name Killing rappers on my hang, I'm by their chains for the fame Never thought I would, and now I'm running You don't wanna follow me, I'm like a fucking funny All right, there we go. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another live broadcast of Steve the Kidney Nurse. Tonight, this is going to be an awesome show. This is one show that you don't see a lot of uh, caregivers coming on live. You may see this in a webinar where you have to register and, and be at a time. This is live, so everyone can see it and i want to thank my my followers and, and my people on TikTok that's watching i'm broadcasting simultaneously from youtube uh the figo initiative facebook page and steve the kidney nurse facebook page now look tonight we're going to talk about one treat one treatment method for kidney failure and that treatment method is peritoneal dialysis. Now, you have other treatment methods, 
you got in center hemo, you got home hemo, and you got uh, peritoneal, which we're going to talk about tonight. Now, unfortunately, when someone gets diagnosed suddenly with end stage renal disease, they normally don't get an opportunity to choose their treatment option. It normally fast track into outpatient. That, that's normally the typical situation, how it goes. And they don't hear about peritoneal until sometime later after they've already, right? They have already started outpatient dialysis, then already got the catheter, right? And maybe some patients may have already gotten the access in their arm and 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 didn't even hear about uh peritoneal until way after the surgery now i mean come on now that's absolutely ridiculous that you get diagnosed and that you don't know you're not fully um informed on all the treatment options available to you for your kidney failure now you may have some people watching scroll through and this may not be happening to them right now but you never know what tomorrow holds okay nowadays it's not only diabetes and hypertension that can cause kidney failure those are the two leading causes but you got lupus you got polycystic kidney disease you got um, um, reaction to uh, medication like Aleve and NSAID and lithium or contrast dye. You got, uh, you got other healthcare diseases that can lead to kidney failure. So when that happens, a lot of time, again, people are fast tracked into home, I mean, not home hemo, but outpatient hemodialysis. So tonight, okay, what I'm going to talk about tonight is peritoneal dialysis, but I want to get into when your kidneys fail, how PD works, getting ready for PD, customizing your PD, preventing problems and equipment and supplies for PD. Now, a lot of people who may be watching this on PD may not have gotten all this information. They may have got some. I don't know. But we'll find out tonight. I want to thank you guys for watching. Definitely, if you hear something, please comment that that may pertain to you or you didn't hear or uh, you may disagree with. I'm open to uh, constructive criticism. You know what I'm saying? So please comment, like, share, um, join the dialogue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, T. Lee 313. I'm on PD starting in April. God bless you. Hopefully you can hear some new information or some information that you already learned. But we're going to go through it right now. Again, thank you for joining T. Lee 313 from Instagram. If you're on Facebook or YouTube or the Figo Initiative page watching this, please comment. Let us give you a shout out. I want to welcome everyone who's watching from around the world. Okay. Dialysis pertains to everyone who's dealing with kidney disease. Please share the broadcast. Ask questions. As Jared uh, Brown says, smash the share button and don't be stingy. Also, let us know where you're from, okay? Let us know where you're from. So now, look, let's get right into it. Let me see, I got a couple of comments. Okay, hey, Candace. No, that was an old video uh, about a month ago. But I'm out of the country in spirit. <laughs> Thanks for joining. God bless you. 
So look, let's get right into it. With peritoneal dialysis, or PD for short, you may hear him say, hey, Indiana, God bless you. God bless you, Lady uh, C Lady Coco. Thank you for joining, dear. Welcome, beloved. Um, with peritoneal dialysis, or PD, you have some choices in treating uh, advanced and permanent kidney failure. Now, in this treatment, peritoneal, has been around since the 80s. In fact, uh, a little short, like eight second story, I started my training at the Austin Di Diagnostic Clinic in 1985. And guess who was the medical director? Um, Dr. Um, Moncrief, I can't think of his first name. Oh, Jack Moncrief. He was labeled the grandfather of PD. And in fact, he um, put the PD in Gary Coleman of different strokes. The one like, what you talking about, Willis? Yep. So, uh, that, that, you know, a little uh, short story. But since the 80s, PD's been around. And since then, um, it's became practical and, and widespread. You see a lot of people doing it. Back in the day, you didn't see a lot of people doing it as you do today because you hear other people talk about infection or this or that. They was getting misinformation from other patients who maybe it didn't work for. And they shared their experience. And other patients took on their experience instead of finding out information on their own. So back in the 90s, you had people doing it, but not like today, because there's a lot of people on dialysis now that are a lot younger, and they see the benefits. They don't want to be strapped to a chair four hours, three times a week. That's taken away from their time. Time is money now. Time is money. You are you wasting my time? Get to the point. That's why I say there's other content creators that's doing wonderful work on TikTok. You know, you see them entertainment. I just watched a guy split an image of Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk. I mean, he looked just like them. However, I knew what, what the assignment is tonight. Because I know once the entertainment is gone, and if you're dealing with a chronic illness, once that entertainment has settled down for the night, you still, we still, because I got kidney disease, but I'm not on dialysis, but people still deal with their disease. It's not going anywhere. The entertainment will, but the disease won't. And that's why it's so important for me to keep continuing these education broadcasts despite the lack of people watching. There should be tons of, you know, it's over 600,000 people dealing with this disease all across the United States and overseas. But anyway, there have been so much knowledge and education learned about how to make PD more effective and minimize. That's what I'm saying. Back in the day, people had side effects. Now technology has gotten so great that they minimized it. Live, you want to know what I'm drinking? This is carrot and ginger. Carrot and ginger juice. Damn. It's good, too. I got my water. So I ain't new to this. I'm true to this. <laughs> nah, but look. Since 
If you do PD, if you was decide to do PD, you don't have to schedule dialysis sessions at the center. What if you was in the hurricane down in Florida? Or in the wake of this path coming up the East Coast in the tropical storm? And your clinic didn't open up. How would you get dialysis? You see my, a lot of people, you know, this kills me, right? I've been, you go back and look at my videos on YouTube. I've been done emergency preparedness. And now, excuse me, I don't mean to be yelling, but I've been done emergency preparedness two years ago. And now you got people doing the same thing that I was doing. I mean, I'm glad that it's our people doing it, but I'm like, damn, I was doing this two years ago. Now I bet you after this, somebody come out and do peritoneal or something else, which is okay. But why do you didn't do it before me? Why does it take a nurse on a Saturday night to, to do an education session on peritoneal? So if you do PD, you don't have to schedule and go to the Dallas Center. You got your freedom. PD gives you more control, point blank, okay? You can give yourself treatments at home, at work, and on trips. Now, let's stop there for a moment. You can give yourself treatment at home and at work. That means if you got hit with dialysis or kidney failure out of the blue, this is why it's important to tell you your treatment options in the beginning while you're in the hospital. After they start the treatment and you got the catheter in you, right? I showed y'all guys that. After they put this in you, you got a decision to make. You got a decision to make. Like what treatment options are you going to do now? after you get out the hospital what things that you got to think about what were you doing before you knew you had kidney failure you maybe work you may did this that travel da 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 right now what you're going to do the kidney disease just put a hold just screech the brakes on your life now so it's best to know in the beginning what you're dealing with and what you got your options to deal with this hey homie i'm going to get to that um yes that's true that's true lady coco and i'm just kind of hopefully getting to ones who, who are able to do this ones that are working a lot of younger population are starting to get kidney disease. You got pe young people with lupus, and they're starting to rear his ugly head uh, in the 20s. And now you see him on, on dialysis. In fact, I did a, a duet with a gentleman who's dealing with this right now, and he got small veins. Minorities have small veins. I, I, I'm telling you. The more you know in the beginning, the better, because just remember, if you fall in the category of needing dialysis and you are a person of color, just know it's not your fault that you have small veins. And again, this is another treatment option. You don't have to go through that unnecessary surgery if you know your options. So you can be at work you can if you do pd you can still be you can go to work and go into another room and do your exchanges now you ain't got to give up your job okay if you want to go traveling now you ain't got to stop if you want to go on the cruise take your stuff on the cruise if you want to go across the country you have this ship 
a lot of people are doing this and a lot of people don't know about this. That's why I'm doing this. That's why it's important for this community to stop blocking out small creators and have an open mind. Because at the end of the day, speaking from a healthcare provider position, the patient pays the price for the lack of education. The patient pays the price. So you can do a lot with PD. All right. And, and, and as my friend Lady Coco on TikTok says, not everyone is going to be able to do peritoneal dialysis. You may have some scar tissue. You may have had a history of hernias. Or it just maybe not be for you or your family member. You may have some people who, who just may not can't learn it or may just don't want to learn it. And that's okay. This is just another form, uh, another treatment option. Yes. And, and and Candace, thank you for joining. Candace V. Madden or Candace uh, uh, um, V. Me Megan. Candace, put your handle up on TikTok. But um, Candace is, is on home dialysis, home hemo. And she says she couldn't do PD because she had three C-sections. And that's what I'm saying. Oh, Candace, my lady. Thank you, Candace. Um, so she's on TikTok. Follow her. Great con great content creator. Uh, shares her life on dialysis and also her experience in looking for a live kidney donor. So that's why the kidney space is so important to get the information out because it's rarely talked about. Rarely talked about. Seem like nobody wants to talk about it, but it has to be talked about. We're going to fight this disease. Candy, hey, Candy, thanks for joining, beloved. She said she did uh, incident hemo, but her hubby did PD. All right, you're welcome, Candace. Thank you for your support as well. DC native, we got to stick together, okay. Um, so they say with this independence, make it especially important that you work closely with your healthcare team. But we, we see the shortage in dialysis and the absence of the nephrologist coming into the clinic sometime. Now you may see the nurse practitioner, but she's included too, the dietitian and the social worker. You have to work closely with them to let them know, hey, I may want to do peritoneal. But the most important members of the healthcare team are you and your family. Uh, don't forget that. You and your family are the most important people on this healthcare team, bar none. Okay. Uh, by learning about your treatment, as soon as you get diagnosed, as soon as you get diagnosed by learning about your treatment, you can work with your healthcare team to give yourself the best possible results and you can live a full active life. I'm serious. It's people doing it every day. They figured it out. They had problems. Don't get me wrong, but they figured out how to overcome and make kidney disease or the, the treatment work for them they not work for the treatment so before i get right into it for people who may not be on dialysis watching this maybe having certain stages of kidney failure let me just talk about when your kidneys fail in a nutshell okay we're not going to be talking all this medical jargon and language 
going to give it to you straight to the point without any chaser. No smoke screens or whistles. You know, if you're not on dialysis and your kidneys still work, you know that your kidneys, they are healthy and they clean your blood by removing excess fluid, minerals, and waste. Okay? We, they also, kidneys are very, very important. That's why a lot of people are going through a lot of issues when these a vital organ shut down because it controls every, not every, but a larger, a lot of major other organs in your body, right? Now, they also make hormone like vitamin D, erythropoietin, okay? Uh, they keep your bones strong and your blood healthy. When your kidneys fail, when they stop working, or when they get to a certain percentage, and we can see this as evidenced by the amount of people that are on kidney dialysis therapy right now. We ain't talking about no no damn teas and uh, uh, herbal remedies. We talking about real time people watching right now that's undergoing dialysis. Okay, harmful waste build up in the blood, the blood pressure skyrockets, and your body retains excess fluid and not make enough red blood cells, which results in a condition called anemia. When this happens, oh my, when this happens, you need treatment to replace the work that your kidneys once did. And that's where dialysis comes in. And that's what happens when you go to the hospital and they come back and they tell you your blood work, you need dialysis. They put you right on, they slap the uh, catheter in, do treatment, and then they fast track you on to hemodialysis, okay? They fast. This is real time. Yeah, it's a little, little bug flying in here. I have my window open. So let's go right into it, guys. A lot of you watching that's doing PD, you know how this works. So you let me know if this is right. Comment. If you got any constructive criticism, I'm open to it. All right? I'm not afraid of, of open criticism as long as it's constructive. So in PD, let me get my, uh, see, this is where you guys are on, wait a minute, let me show you, hold on. Okay, let me put it on the screen, and then I'm going to show my crew on TikTok. Okay. Okay, so in PD, guys, let me show you right here. This is, this is peritoneal, this is the solution, uh, this is the, the uh the connection line you got the catheter and then this is the lining and this is the abdominal cavity so let me read this all right in pd per, or peritoneal dialysis damn it in peritoneal dialysis a soft tube called the catheter all right showed you the catheter right there a soft tube called the catheter is used to fill your abdomen okay so this too is used so uh the solution is like in the bag and let me bring this out oh shit sorry guys hold up that's how it is in real time uh solution kind of like but it's in a larger bag like this okay um it fills your abdomen with a cleansing solution called a dialysis solution or a dialysate but this is bigger than this the walls of your abdominal cavity right and i showed y'all this 
This is the wall, right? The wall, and you can see it on the screen, guys, watching in YouTube and Facebook. The walls of your abdominal cavity are lined with a membrane called the peritoneum, which allows waste products. It works just like this filter right here, which allows waste products and extra fluid to pass from to the dialysis solution. Okay, the solution contains a sugar called dextrose that will pull the dextrose because of the molecules is going to pull the waste and the extra fluid into the abdominal cavity okay these waste and fluid then leave your body when the dialysis solution is drained the used solution containing waste and extra fluid is then thrown away. The process of draining and filling is called an exchange. Again, the process of draining and filling the abdominal cavity is called an exchange. And it normally takes about 30 to 40 minutes. That's why if you guys are watching and you know uh melanie when she's on live and she does her you know exchanges that's what she's doing she's 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 filling her her abdominal cavity letting the fluid go in and letting it sit in there called the well okay uh let me put this picture up again so what's happening the fluid is draining from here guys via the catheter and it's, it goes in here and sits in here uh, for about thirty to forty, say about uh, thirty to forty minutes. It's sitting in your stomach, and then I want to show you a picture how it's drained out. And this membrane, right, the peritoneum is the membrane that's pulling the waste and the excess fluid into that bag, okay? The period, the dialysis solution, right? When this drains in, the period that the solution is in the abdomen is called the dwell time. So it's just dwelling, it's just sitting there doing what it does, right? Pulling that extra fluid, and excess uh and that waste out of the blood right and so a typical pd dialysis schedule let me remove this is a typical schedule calls for four exchanges a day so each with a dwell time of four to six hours so that fluid is sitting in that's why I mail say I'm I finished drain, you know, I mean I finished infusing, putting it in, and she's sitting around waiting four to six hours so she could drain it out. Uh different types of PD have different schedules. So remember that different types of PD have different schedules of daily exchanges. Um the most common form of PD is continuous oh let me show you uh one other picture and so this is right here the fluid is going in right it sits in and then you got a drain bag and then when you're ready to drain it drains out by gravity okay it drains out by grass, sits in the abdomen for four to six hours. And then when you're ready to drain, you disconnect this bag. And some of them used to have used the same bag, but I think now they may have a drain bag connected. Uh, if I got my uh, PD warriors on here, correct me if I'm wrong or let me know if it's two bags or one bag they use for the drain, okay? 
Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, again, the most common form of PD, continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, or CAPD, as they call it for short, uh, doesn't require a machine. As the word ambulatory means walking around, suggests you can walk around with the dialysis solution in your abdomen. Other forms of PD require a machine called a cycler, okay? And uh, to fill and drain your abdomen. So the cycler does the work for you instead of you doing it manually, the cycler does it. And they got the drain bags hooked up while you sleep. Um, the different types of cycling assisted PD are sometimes called automated peritoneal dialysis or APD. APD. All right. Let's talk about um wait a minute. All right. Let's talk about preventing PD. Let's talk about getting ready for PD. Share this live. Hit the likes on, on, on TikTok. Look, guys, you're not going to get nobody dedicated like this up on a Saturday just trying to educate, ain't charging no interest fee or having you go to some Zoom and sign up, go through some red tape. This is on Facebook. It's on YouTube right now. Uh, it's on TikTok Live. I just need the audience. You know, and it only takes one person. You know what I'm saying? Just like an NA meeting or an AA meeting. All you need is another person. Even, you can apply this to kidney disease. If I'm dealing with kidney disease, you deal. All we need is two people to talk about it, to pass the information, and then that person and, and the other person share it with somebody else. But here we have a big community, but a lack of participation. Lack of participation. And the lack of petition, the lack of participation is always when there's good information being given so freely the time the energy the effort you, you, you understand what i'm saying but anyway let's talk about getting ready for pd if you decide to do it Hopefully, after this, you're watching. Hopefully, this will give you some insight, some look into PD without having to schedule an appointment with the PD nurse or get some misinformed information online or searching the web. And, and and coming up short the information i'm giving you is all evidence based meaning it's been scientifically researched and proven it ain't no you know gone with the wind type of stuff so hopefully after this you'll be able to make an informed decision if this is for you, your family, or someone you know, this option. Because there's a lot of benefits to this if you can do it. So let's talk about getting ready for PD. Whether you choose an ambulatory, which is um, CAPD, which is the manual which I showed, or automated using a machine form of PD. 
you'll need to have a soft catheter placed in your stomach. Now I'm going to show you, you rarely, I swear to you, unless, uh-oh, hold on. Hold on, my uh, power about to go out. We don't want that. There we go. Okay, you. What I'm about to show you, you rarely, even for 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 warriors who got on PD. If 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 you're not like looking and researching and doing Google images. You rarely able to see how the catheter looks like that's going into your stomach. And I want to show you that right now. You rarely. So now if you're watching this and you don't know or you're trying to make a decision, now you're going to get an insight of what a, ca a PD catheter looks like from an actual diagram. And for my people watching on YouTube and, and uh, Facebook and um, Figo Initiative, I didn't forget about you guys. There you go. Here we go, guys. This is how a PD catheter looks. You got two types. And you got the one that curls up. If, if, if you on here and you do PD, tell me which one you got. Let Jared Brown know, the Warriors Quest show. Let him know what PD catheter you got, guys. If you're a PD warrior, give a shout out where you from and what type of catheter you got. Let the Warriors Quest, my brother in arms, Jared Brown know. We, we, which one do you guys got? Okay. This, this is how it looks like. And you got the cuffs. You see the cuffs and these little circles is where the, the exchanges happen with the blood. That's why these little holes are in there. This is a rare look on, the, on how a PD catheter looks like. So I don't know if you'll ever see this again unless you go online and do a Google image. Okay? You got your two cuffs, one on the inside and one on the outside, baby. It's, it's soft and it's flexible. Uh, it's an exchange. The exchanges are um, four to six hours once you dwell it. Okay? So... Let me take this down. Hold on. So here go your catheter. You're not going to get this information anywhere else. I guarantee you. Unless you Google it. You're not going to see any other content creator. You may see it on YouTube. You know, the fancy guys. But that's a video. You're not able to interact with them like you are with me. <laughs> That's my passion, but thank you. I always got to watch that. You know why? Someone told me I project. That's my projection. And thank you for telling me about the screaming. Um, um, I got to be mindful of that. So thank you so much. I was in the military, so I project, you know, that, that type of image. So, uh, so let me go on. Let me stop screaming. I'm just so passionate. You know, I'm like a Mr. T, all right? <laughs> Samuel Jackson. All right, motherfucker. Nah, all right. <laughs> but anyway, um, whether you choose an ambulatory or automated form of PD, you'll need to have a soft catheter placed in your abdomen. The catheter, which I showed you guys, is the tube that carries the dialysis solution into and out of your abdomen. Um, after giving you a local anesthetic to minimize any pain, the surgeon will make a small cut, often below and a little to the side of your navel or your belly button. 
And then God decathed it through the slit into the peritoneal cavity. As soon as the catheter is in place, you can start to receive solution through it. Although you probably won't begin a full schedule of exchanges for two to three weeks. I don't know any um, <laughs> any uh, PD warriors on here who um, can share their experience with the surgery and how long it took them to do the exchanges once they started. I mean, once they got the surgery, did it take the two to three weeks to do a full schedule? Uh, when did you start? Please elaborate and share with us. Um, this break, and, and you know what? Let me put this back up here um, about the catheter. This, um, the break-in period, this break-in period uh, lets you build up scar tissue that will hold the catheter in place. So that's why they wait for a while so the scar tissue can build up. And that's where the cuffs come in. You see the cuffs? And um, the scar tissue build up around that. Okay, six weeks. Thank you for commenting. Thank you. Um, yeah. Out the cuffs. Uh, the standard catheter for PD is made of soft tubing for comfort. It has Dacron cuffs that merge with your scar tissue to keep it in place. So with the cuffs, right? With the cuffs, whichever one you decide to get, uh, it's called uh, Dacron cuffs. And that merge with your scar tissue to keep, help keep it in place. Dacron is a, a polyester fabric. Dacron is a polyester fabric. Um, so the end of the tubing that is inside your abdomen has many holes to allow the free flow of solution in and out. So let me put that back on the screen. That's what I was saying. These holes at the end right here, depending on what catheter you got, straight catheter or curl catheter, these holes um, allow allow um, the free flow of solution, the dialysate in and out. Um, types of PD. The types of PD you choose will depend on the schedule of exchanges you would like to follow, as well as other factors. You may start with one type of PD and switch to another, or you may find that a combination of automated and non-automated exchanges suit you best. Work with your healthcare team to find the best schedule and techniques to meet your lifestyle and health needs. Let's talk about continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis or CAPD for short. If you choose CAPD, you'll drain a fresh bag of dialysis solution into your abdomen. After four to six or more hours of the well time, and again, the well time is the fluid sitting in your stomach, you'll drain the solution, which now contains waste into the bag. You then repeat the cycle with a fresh bag of solution. You don't need a machine for CAPD. All you need is gravity to fill and empty your abdomen. So what they mean by what you need by gravity, that's why you see um, the person that I showed you sitting down right here. 
and let me um, put it on the screen right here because the gravity when they sitting down the gravity flows out into the bag okay um you don't need a machine for capd let me take this off all you need is gravity to fill and empty to fill and empty your abdomen so you need gravity for the fluid to fill in and you're gonna need the gravity for the fluid to flow out that's why the bag's on the floor and it got the bag hanging um your doctor will prescribe the number of exchanges you'll need. Yes, you'll decide with your doctor the number of exchanges you will need to do throughout the day. Typically, three or four exchanges during the day and one evening exchange with a long overnight dwell time while you sleep. If you're on PD, share with if, if warrior quest is still on here even if he's not please share with me how many exchanges do you do during the day and throughout the night please share your experience thank you let's talk about ccpd or continuous cycler assisted peritoneal dialysis how was that um um uh, voice now in your lady. I'm in it. I, if, if you're not a lady, I'm sorry, but is, is, is the voice, is the tone uh, a lot better as far as the uh, reduction of, of, of yelling? Seriously, is that is that much better? Because I do got to be better with that uh, and know on social media how I have to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's talk about CCPD. Uh, which is continuous cycler assisted peritoneal dialysis. This uses an automated cycler. Now, I don't have the cycler picture of it. I'm sorry, guys, but what you can do is Google CCPD cycler and then go to the images and they'll show you the different ones. They got Baxter, this one, that one. They normally about that big got a heating thing on it to put the bag on top. And then, no, I'm sorry, that's the warmer. The cycle is the one where you put the bags up at the top and they make the exchanges. My, my apologies, I stand corrected, all right? And so with CCPD, uh, you, you perform three to five exchanges during the night while you sleep. Uh, in the morning, you begin one exchange with a dwell time that lasts the entire day. Now, again, some people may have different um, um, exchange schedules. So this is not a one fits all. I'm just, this is a generalization of what may happen, but each person that's on PD may have a, a tailored PD exchange schedule that's why a lot of people like pd and the benefits of it because you can tailor your treatment that fits you and that what you feel comfortable with then they got something that i don't really hear much about but it's in this literature uh nocturnal and oh nocturnal means at night i'm a nocturnal person I mean, you're a night person, nocturnal. All right, so don't let that word throw you off. What is nocturnal? Nocturnal at night. Nocturnal intermittent peritoneal dialysis. Now, what this is, is like CCPD, continuous cycler assisted peritoneal dialysis, only the difference is the number of overnight exchanges is greater is six or more exchanges now i don't know if we have any um pd warriors watching but i don't know have you guys heard of that nocturnal intermittent peritoneal dialysis where you're doing overnight exchanges 
um, of six or more. Have, have, have anyone thought of that or is doing it um, or considered something like that, but didn't know if other people were doing it or, uh, or, or you know, didn't know if, if it was safe? It, you're not alone. It, it's out there in the literature. Thank you for coming. Okay, you've heard of it. Thank you. So what happens, um, the overnight exchanges is greater, six or more, and you don't perform an exchange during the day. So that may be the beauty for a lot of people. If you, if you do overnight exchanges, nocturnal intimate PD is reserved. But, but check this out. And you don't perform any exchanges during the day. That means you're free to do work or whatever you got to do without doing any treatment. Maybe a lot of people didn't know about this. That's what I'm saying. These education sessions are so important because maybe someone's watching this and didn't know, and maybe PD, the, 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 the exchange schedule was interfering with their life. And now that they hear it is, maybe it may be some hope to if you discuss it with your doctor and say, hey, I heard a guy talking about a kidney nurse talking about nocturnal intermittent uh, peritoneal dialysis. And where you do six or more exchanges throughout the night and no exchanges during the day, maybe that may work for me and what I need to do. In, um, they call it NIPD for short. It's usually reserved for patients whose peritoneum is able to transport waste products very rapidly or for patients who still have substantial kidney function. So please pay close attention to what I just said. Nocturnal intermittent peritoneal dialysis is usually reserve for patients whose peritoneum that's the lining of your abdomen okay is able to transport waste very rapidly now if you can't do that rapidly because you, you can have some side effects to that or if you still have some urination Check this out. You have how many patients you still on dialysis still had a urination? And if they knew about this peritoneal nocturnal intermittent, they wouldn't have to get stuck or had a catheter or go to the treatment. Instead, they could be at home. They still urinate. They're doing PD. They can eat whatever they want. You working, you're doing PD, you got your room cut out. Boom, boom, boom. You're doing what you got to do. You clean the catheter, no infections. You got your, 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 your covers, waterproof cover. You're doing the damn thing. You're not letting uh, kidney disease and dialysis stop you, stop your grind, stop your travel, stop you from getting your bag. Yes, Miss Davis, yes. Yes. Share that. Share that. I wish a lot more people could know that and could have done that. That's why I'm doing these shows. To get people to think, to spark dialogue. Maybe where other healthcare practitioners are not doing. You got nurses, a lot of great nurses that work in dialysis. They may be sitting at home right now. And I'm not talking about them. They may be watching YouTube. I'm sorry, um, um, cable or Netflix or traveling. You think they worried about coming on and educating? So, um, 
let me finish this. I see the 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 uh, invitation. Uh, I, I want to get through this, and depending on the time, I may go live with someone. But let me get through this, and and, and let me stop uh, interrupting myself. Um, so we talked about the types of PD. Um, okay. PD, we talked about nocturnal, intermittent. Did that. Sorry, guys. So let's talk about customizing your PD. Customizing your PD. If you chosen CAPD, you may have a problem. Now, and, and if, if you're on TikTok and you want and you're doing CAPD, please. Uh, I'm not sure where that's at in California. Oh, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. But my is my calling is out educating like right now instead of inside the school building where you know I want to have the greatest impact. Uh, but if you've chosen CAPD, you may have a problem with the long overnight dwell time. And some patients do because of the dextrose. And we're going to get into that. It's normal. Again, if you just started PD or if you're about to start PD, li please listen to this very carefully. You know, I'm not, you know, it, not the veterans. You know, I'm not trying to step on no toes. But just for people who start, who may encounter some problems, again, if you chose a CAPD, you may have a problem with the long overnight dwell time. It's normal for some of the dextrose in the solution to cross into your blood and become glucose. The absorbed dextrose doesn't create a problem during short dwell times. But overnight, some people absorb so much dextrose or sugar that it starts to draw fluid from the peritoneal cavity back into the body, reducing the efficiency of the exchange. Has anybody experienced that? If you have this problem, you may be able to use a mini cycler, a small version. Okay, a small version of a machine that automatically fills and drains your abdomen. That's what a mini cycler is. To exchange your solution once or several times overnight while you sleep. These additional shorter exchanges will minimize solution absorption and give you added clearance of waste and excess fluid. If you chosen CCPD, continuous cycler peritoneal dialysis, you may have a solution absorption problem with the daytime exchanges, which has a long dwell time, you may find you need an additional exchange in the mid afternoon to increase the amount of waste removed and to prevent excess absorption of solution. Let's talk about something that's very important now. Preventing problems. Because we know with peritoneal, all kind of problems can rear its ugly head. The big culprit, and you guys know it, you, you PD warriors know the biggest culprit let me see you hear you guys say it without me saying you know the biggest culprit of problem that needs to be prevented in pd what is it 
What's the number one? <laughs> yep. Yep. Kidney strong. God bless you. Thank you. Peritonitis. Infection is the most common problem. The most common problem for people on PD. So that's why you really, when you start this, you know, listen to people. I'm not a, this is a thing. I'm just an educator. An educator and an advocate. I never walked in the shoes of Kidney Strong, Lady Muck Muck. Uh, male or anyone who has a PD catheter. I never walked in them shoes. Only thing I'm doing is give you the information that educators miss or fill in the blanks, right? With that being said, I know it ain't all about education. It's the patient and how they feel. And so I say that to say, if you're new to peritoneal dialysis, definitely listen to the warriors like Kidney Strong, Mel Pena, and all the rest of the people who are PD warriors, who are veterans and who have experience with almost getting peritonitis or cleaning their catheter or whatever they're doing because that is the best experience and advice who live it every day only thing i could do is fill in the blanks with the education and so you can make an informed decision so you know the good and the bad not sugarcoat because once you know the good and the bad of each treatment option, now you can sit down with your family and make an informed decision what works best for your situation. Not every situation is going to work for everyone. Not everybody's going to, not PD is not going to work for everyone. Home hemo is not going to work for everyone. Incent is not going to work for everyone. Transplant is not going to work for everyone. That's why you got a different treatment option. And that's why you have to respect anyone who makes a treatment option that's not similar to yours. Because it doesn't work. Every shoe is not the same size. So... Your healthcare team should, I'm not going to say will, because we know how that works, but they should show you how to keep your catheter bacteria free to avoid peritonitis. Okay. Now, as an educator, only thing I can show you is the correct way how to clean it, putting on gloves taking off the gloves, using sanitizer, how to clean the area, going from inner to outer, moving the germs away from the middle. I can't teach you to clean it with no gloves on. You may see warriors on here doing that. Okay? And I, listen, I'm not one here to judge, to say they right or wrong. Because it depends on, I know they know better or what they learned training because they don't want no peritonitis. So they maybe definitely scrubbed their hands and got the okay and know to what realm to go. But if I teach, I want to tell you from the health professional point, you know, put on, wash your hands, put on your gloves. Do this, maybe take off your gloves, change. Some people may not have that supplies, but I know with PD, they send you tons of supplies. Okay, I mean, too much. But, but yeah, uh, so peritonitis 
is an infection of the peritoneum. So that's an infection of the lining of the peritoneum. I'm sorry, of the abdomen. The peritoneum is it lines the abdomen and it works, acts as a membrane. So peritonitis, inflammation, itis, the end itis means inflammation that impart. And then periton is your peritoneum. So inflammation or infection of the peritoneum. That's where you get peritonitis from. Some infection of the peritoneum could be so devastating. And if not caught in time that it can shut down that peritoneum, now you got to do another form of dialysis. And that's happened to many patients. A lot of times warriors, PD warriors, they know, they know that 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 little sign and they act on it and they get that vancomycin or whatever antibiotic they shoot in the bag and steal it and let it sit in there and do, do it work does let it sit in there and do it does it work let it do it work jesus <laughs> anyway let it perform what it does okay uh now, improved catheter designs protect against the spread of bacteria. So now they're saying this with the new improved catheters, it's kind of hard to, but peritonitis is still a common problem that, that sometimes makes continuing PD impossible. So you should follow your nurse's uh, instructions carefully. But here are some general rules that if you know you may not heard these, you may have, but I want to tell you: store your supplies in a cool, clean, dry place. Inspect, and I repeat, inspect each bag of solution for signs of contamination before you use it. Definitely do that because I heard Baxter had an issue with their PD, with their, um, with their um, pediatric solution. All right, so definitely um, check your solution for signs of contamination. Is it cloudy? It needs to be clear, see through any particles in it like from the manufacturer, could be floating around, cloudy, cloudiness. Uh, find a clean, dry, well-lit space to perform your exchanges, whether it's your bedroom, whether it's another room that you designate, okay? Some people, they don't want their equipment in the bedroom, you know, especially if you're married, because that machine may be going on and your spouse got to sleep. Some people designate another room just for PD. And this is what I would I always say this, like if, if I was to start dialysis, and that's a big if, all right? Because I, I have reservations like if that if it came down to that. But if I did start dialysis, had to, I would do PD, but I would designate a room. And before I do my treatment, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to put on clean pajamas. Right? And I'm going to go in there and do what I do. No one else comes in that room. I'm not going to have any pets. None of that right? That's just me. Um, wear, and some people don't have this, but wear sterile gloves to perform exchanges. Now you don't have sterile, you just have clean. Uh, wash your hands other than the uh, operating room. 
wear sterile gloves. I'm sorry. Wash your hands every time you need to handle your catheter. Clean the exit site with antiseptic every day. So they want you to clean that every day. Oh, he got used to the noise. Okay, okay. Uh, wear a surgical mask when performing exchanges, if, if you got a cold. Even if you don't, because we all, and a lot of people don't know, we all have staff right under our nasal flares. That's why when you go in a hospital, they may give you a nasal swab to see if you got MRSA. <laughs> All right. So definitely wear a mask when you do your exchanges. Also, keep a close watch for any signs of infection and report them so they can be treated promptly. Like I said, some PD warriors know the signs. Uh, here are some signs to watch for. Fever, nausea or vomiting, redness or pain around the catheter, unusual color or cloudiness, and use dialysis solution. So when you got the when you drain in for the new warrior, for the new PD warriors that's just starting, I mean just like fresh, fresh, just fresh starting. If if you drain in, and if your nurse haven't told you, if you see an unusual color, like pinkish or reddish or cloudiness, and the used dialysate when it's coming out, any clots, with blood, blood clots, you call that nurse on the phone immediately. A catheter. Also, watch out for a catheter cuff that has been pushed out. A catheter cuff that has been pushed out. You want to be careful with that. Okay. So let's talk about the equipment and supplies that are used. The PD Warriors. I'm sure y'all heard of the transfer set. Transfer set. A transfer set, guys. Let me show you. I'm going to put up here on YouTube. This is the transfer set on there. And then transfer set right here. But a transfer set is tubing that connects the bag of dialysis solution to the catheter. Two types of transfer sets are available. A straight transfer and a Y set. Hey, super nurse, thanks for joining. Uh, a straight transfer and a Y set. Share which one you have or use. A straight transfer set is a straight piece of tubing that stays connected to your catheter. To begin each exchange, you connect the free end to a fresh bag of solution and hang the bag higher than the catheter, usually attaching it to a special stand, like an IV pole. So that gravity pulls the solution into your abdomen, okay? While the solution is in your abdomen, you can roll up the bag and wear it under your clothes. That's what they used to do back in the day when people had to go to work. That's what I say. You can do this at work. You can't do hemo at work, but you can do PD at work, okay? You roll up the bag and wear it under your clothes. When you finish your dwell time, you take the bag out and place it near the floor so that gravity pushes the used solution down into the bag. When the bag is full, you disconnect it from the straight transfer set 
and connect a fresh bag of solution to start the next exchange. And that other bag, you just dump it down the toilet, right? A Y set, which is the second type of transfer set, is a Y-shaped piece of tubing that can be disconnected between exchanges. To start, you connect the base of the Y to your catheter. You then connect one branch of the Y to a fresh bag of solution and the other to an empty bag, excuse me, to flush away any bacteria that might be in the transfer set you close off the base of the Y and drain a small amount of solution from the full bag into the empty one. Then you close the branch that leads to the empty bag and let the solution flow into your abdomen. Once the bag has emptied, you can disconnect the Y set from your catheter so you won't need to conceal a bag or extra tubing under your clothing, under your clothes. When it's time to empty the used solution, you reconnect the catheter to the Y set and drain the solution into an empty bag to discard. You connect a fresh bag and begin the process again. Oh, that's all right, Big Red. That's what I'm talking about. See, that's like people like Big Red, five years, five years, no peritonitis. That, that's like type of people you have to reach out to to find out what's Big Red's secret to that peritonitis. That's why it's so important for these lives, for people to come on and interact and discuss and dialogue and network and share that information. Because where someone may have been be prone to peritonitis, they could reach out to Big Red and say, hey, Big Red, what did you do to not get peritonitis for five years? What's your secret? Hey, San Antonio. Yeah, I got I got a, a program on that as well to do home dialysis. This particular treatment topic is on peritoneal. But I will be doing home hemo and discussing that. This is just one of many discussions. So definitely come back when I do home hemo. This is home dialysis, but it's just a different type of home dialysis that's all all right so when i do home was that you to say that <laughs> but i will be doing home hemo trust me um um but this just happened to be just one portion so that's the y set now um the y set is filled with disinfectant when it's not in use. This disinfectant is flushed out with the used dialysate solution. These procedures make the Y set more effective at protecting against peritonitis. A Y set can be reused for several months. Do we got anybody using the Y set? Anybody using the Y set? Okay, so let's talk about the solution. That's very important. The solution comes in big bags. They look like this, but they bigger bag and they're dextrose. It's not normal saline like this. This is 0 0.9 sodium chloride, which is just another word for salt water. And it's compatible to the fluid in your body. This is what they give you when you go to the ER and they be hooking up the bags of fluid if you got um, dehydrated or whatever. Oh, okay, okay, good night. Thank you for joining. Good night, um, Alana. I appreciate you tuning in. Definitely follow me, please. 
Um, I'm almost finished. I only just got this page and the next one, and that's it. But let's talk about the dialysis solution. The dialysis solution comes in different types, right? Different types. But mainly, you may see people with the uh, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. Or maybe 4.25. But like I said, it could be two, three. So a liter is slightly more than one quart. All right, these are three liter bags. The dialysis, the dialysis dose can be increased by using a larger bag. That's how they increase the dialysis. You may have one person that use a 1.5 solution in one time, and then another person using. A 4.25. Oh, thank you. Thank you from, from Trinidad. Um, peace and blessings to you. I know you may have to work tomorrow, but um, yeah, I'd be talking about other stuff as well. Oh, I, I got some dialysis tech information too. So um, please hit my inbox let me know what you want to hear about like air embolism or um talk about the filter or uh, uh i had it damn or the catheter just let me know just let me know and we can we can talk about we can talk about dialysis stuff with the technicians what they should be doing and and sticking it at, at a 45 degree angle going in and when you see the blood flashback you advance the needle and the butterfly taping and all that yes we can talk about it um and i see you have a great night peace and blessings to you um oh yeah but you may work nwf or tts but look these solutions comes in these bags right and the larger the bag, the higher the concentration, but only within the limit of the amount your abdomen can hold. You may have a small abdomen. It can't hold a lot of fluid, okay? The solution contains a sugar, as I mentioned before, called dextrose, sugar water. And this sugar water or dextrose pulls extra fluid from the blood the doctor will decide what treatment option or what strength that fits your needs. If you want to gain a lot of fluid, you gain a lot of fluid between treatments, they're going to put you on a larger dose. If you want to don't and still urinate, they're going to put you on a smaller 1.5, 2.5. Um, you also need a clean space to store your bags of solution and other supplies. Check with Kidney Strong, check with um, Melanie, check with Big Red and other PD Warriors, how they got this set up with their supplies. They got, mainly they probably got one of those um, um, storage cabinets that you can get from Walmart or um, uh, Target or Amazon where you got maybe the four drawers. And you put your salute and you put your uh, alka vase and your accept in one drawer, all your alcohol pads and maybe a thermometer and your um, maybe your transfer set in one and your gloves in one and whatever other supplies you use and you need, you have them in that that storage, small storage that sits right on the floor, right? Don't, don't have to take up much space. And the, the, the one thing you do have to worry about if you do PD is finding the space to store the solution. Now, the PD warriors would tell you when they get that delivery, man, it's it's a lot of boxes. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Kathy. Miss Kathy. Oh, you're still not on dialysis. Thank God. 
Kevin. Okay. Hey, Miss Vernon Johnson. But look, share this live. But what I was saying, the most challenge you may have is finding storage. Kidney strong, 42 boxes. Oh, Michaels, okay. It's finding storage. Now, if you got a small apartment, that may be a challenge. Everybody doesn't have a house, a two, three, four bedroom house. And so if you got a small apartment, if you want to do peritoneal, you're going to have to make it fit some way. May have to become a minimalist, a minimalist. You know, a lot of stuff we don't need that we can throw out and make space. But it can be done. Don't let the clinic discourage you from not doing PD if you decide that you want to do PD after, you know, you hear this or you're thinking about it. Because there has been warriors who started hemo and you still got your access, right? So if you start PD and if it doesn't work out, you're going to always switch back to hemo. But go home and do hemo if you got somebody to help you out. If you can, not everybody has a caregiver to help them at home hemo. So you can do home hemo by yourself, but if you fall into a situation, if you pass it out, you can't help yourself. Not unless you're aware that you're passing out. But the last I look when patients at the clinic pass out, and when we bring them back, they want to know what happened. So if you're not aware of what's happening, how are you going to give yourself sailing and cut off the UF? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you like I said, you'll need a clean space to store your bags, a solution, and other supplies. You may also need a special heating device. They got these warmers. The, the PD warriors know what I'm talking about. They could probably comment about the, the warmers that they put their solution on to warm it up. So, when it goes in, you don't get that cold solution and get cramps, right? Or they put it in the microwave, all right? But the, rec the, the, the manufacturers don't recommend using microwave ovens to warm solution because they change its chemical makeup. Okay, this is what they're saying that the manufacturers are saying. Now, don't don't shoot the messenger. Like I said, I never walked in them shoes before, so I wouldn't know if I heated my solution in a microwave, will I still get the same benefits of clearance? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you guys for, for that. So let me talk about the cycler and then I, and then um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the cycler, which automatically fills and drains your abdomen, usually at night while you sleep can be programmed to deliver specific, I'm sorry, can be programmed to deliver specified volumes of dialysis solution on a specified schedule. Most systems include the following components. Solution storage. At the beginning of the session, you connect bags of dialysis solution to, to tubing that feeds the cycler. Most systems include a separate tube for the last bag because this solution may have a higher dextrose content so they can work for a day long dwell time. Another component is a pump. The pump sends the solution from the storage bags 
to the heater bag before it enters the body and then sends it from the way bag to the disposal container after it's been used. The pump doesn't fill and drain your abdomen. Gravity performs that job more safely. Heater bags. Before the solution enters your abdomen, a measured dose is warm to body temperature. Once the solution is the right temperature and the previous exchange has been drained, a clamp is released to allow the warm solution to flow into your abdomen. So I'm going to show you guys a picture of that process. Hold on. I've been on here 90 minutes. That's an AA meeting. Okay. So for you guys watching on YouTube, I put it up for you guys. Oh, and then they got a way bag. The cycler timer releases a clamp to let the used dialysis solution drain from your abdomen into a way bag that measures and records how much solution has been removed. Some systems compare the amount of solution inserted with the amount drained and display the net difference between the two volumes. This lets you know whether the treatment is removing enough fluid from your body. It also has a container, a disposal container. After the used solution is weighed, it's pumped to a disposal container that you can throw away in the morning. Alarms, sensors will trigger an alarm and shut off the machine if there's problems with inflow or outflow. So let me show you guys on here. Here's the pump right here. Here's the bags of solution. Um, the heat was that. Here's the heated bag right here. And you see how it goes down, and it goes into the stomach. And you got the way bag right here. And you got the disposal container right there. And then that's the pump. And you can see how it's working. And after you finish, the other part is cut off, which is the disposal container, which is disconnected and thrown away. So that's, man, that's it. That's it. I mean, in a nutshell, took me an hour and a half, but um, on my YouTube and Facebook, if you guys got any questions, please ask. I only got two people watching. Um, so I probably shut the this broadcast down and interact with uh, with TikTok since I had the most um, people on. Um, again, this I say is it's so important. I always had this issue with Facebook um, and getting people to come to. Uh, free education. I mean, it didn't cost nothing for me to, to go over this, to, to, to talk about it. And, and this is, like I said, this is evidence-based information, treatment method for peritoneal. And uh, that's why I had to, on my first book, I had to put the information in the book because if you don't want it free, Maybe you'll pay for it. You know, that wasn't my intentions on writing a book, but it's just that people, I can't even get kidney warriors to come listen. I don't know if it's boring or what, but this is the education that patients are supposed to get when they get diagnosed with kidney failure so they 
so they'll be able to make an informed decision on what treatment option they want, whether it's your mom, dad, sister, brother, uncle. Nobody wants to do dialysis if they don't have to, but wouldn't you want to know the options available to you and if those options are painless, Yeah, see your nephew. See right here, this per like stage four, don't feel lost, I'm here for you. Okay, um, Macy Alvarado, don't feel lost. Seriously, I'm here for you and I'm not just talking bullshit because I know how serious this is for you. Um, and if you cross that line, you know, and have to go on dialysis, I wrote a book. Just for people who have to go that route on dialysis so they'll know what to expect once they cross over. But if you're in stage four, you still got time. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, to know whether you're in the high part of stage four or the lower part with your numbers. So now we got to come up with a treatment plan for you to stop that progression, you know, so you can still live a, a healthy life. Stop the progression by watching your diet, okay? Following the, uh, the doctor's recommendation, you know, uh, lowering your protein intake, your cholesterol, watch your blood sugar, watch your blood pressure. Um, I don't have my container, but I have stage two kidney disease. And I take this product right here, Renadil. You can research this or go to my page and look at my video with this okay this is a, a pre-probiotic it's a supplement it's not a medication and it hasn't been fda approved but it's a pre-probiotic if you know how probiotics work where they eat the bad bacteria and put in fresh bacteria and then eliminate the bad through your stools it's the same concept it helps reduce the workload of the kidney by eating up the nitrogenesis waste and toxins, helping the kidneys and eliminating that through the stools. We we done shows on this, had talked to uh, people who've taken this, done testimonial shows, and this is the like the unkept secret out there that people don't know about. So, um, um, so the person said they got stage two or stage four. Congratulations on that transplant. You don't, you're not alone, uh, especially in the kidney space community on TikTok and, um, and Facebook. But even here with me, if you need any assistance or help or, you know, questions answered, uh, you can send me a, um, let me, uh, hold on. Let me put my email up there. So I'll put my email, um, wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. I don't want to put my whole address. Hold on. Wait, I'll be right back. I gotta get a All right, guys. Um, so let me write my email because um, I don't know if I'm following you or not. And I don't know if you're able to leave a message in my inbox. But I'm going to write my uh, email down so you can send me an email and I'll respond to you personally and help you manage this stage four if you don't have someone helping you right now.
or give you just some suggestions to keep it at bay. Because I don't know what other medical conditions you may or may not have that could be contributing factor. But I can just share with you like the diet and what you should be doing at stage four to keep that at bay. You know what I'm saying? saying? You don't see like a lot of nurses doing this on a Saturday night, 9.51. A lot of them be out at the bar, you know, trying to have fun. But that's that's not about this, man. Your life is important. So this is the email right here. You can reach me at. This says Urban, Urban Health Nurse Educator at gmail.com. Again, urban health nurse educator at gmail.com. I know that's a long damn name for uh <laughs> for email, but urban health nurse educator at gmail.com. And that's not just for that person, that's for anyone who's dealing with kidney disease, kidney failure, you're at a clinic, some shit going on that you never seen before and, and you don't know who to talk to about and the people at your clinic not listening to you. You talk to them going one end out the other. To anybody, if, if, if you got questions about your treatment, uh, if you're not on dialysis yet and like, like this person at stage four and you don't know what to do, you feel lost, um, you can email me and we can take it from there. I'm not going to charge you any money or anything like that. But let me just say this, you know, possibly 2023 after the first of the year, I may do some type of consult, you know, fee won't be outrageous. I mean, I got to earn too. I mean, I'm not working full time, but, but for right now, everything is, as they say, pro bono. Okay. And it's up to you. I can tell you and speak to your ears turn blue, but if you don't implement and, and, and the suggestions, I, I mean, I can't do nothing else. Only thing I can do is you share with me what's going on and I can just give you my opinion. You know, it's an opinion. There's no contracts written up. You know, I'm always going to tell you to talk with your doctor. I'm not going to say you should do this, you should do that. It's going to be suggestions, opinion, Talk with your doctor at the end of the day. Just don't go and think about it. But yeah, put it up there again. Urban Health Nurse Educator at gmail.com. See, a lot of guys you'll be seeing on TikTok be like that, like, yo, I got this $7. I can show you how to do this. If you got stage four, stage three. You can come into this program and yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to do that bullshit. You know, the banana and the tailpipe type of stuff. Because I know how important this is when you've been hit with a serious disease like kidney, I mean, kidney disease or kidney failure, which is the ninth leading cause of death in the United States. The last thing you want to think about is trying to pay for something, right? We all know that. But with that being said, sometimes you have to pay for information. You know, it just depends on how much. Like I said, I'm not out trying to tax nobody. I, I would feel like this book is $24.99, right? Now, $24.99 is nothing compared to the anxiety one may feel on the unknowns of kidney dialysis going in 
to some strange building you never been in before, meeting people you never met, some Joe Smo about to stick a 15 gauge needle in your in your arm and you want to know what's going on you want to know what's going on when somebody putting something like this in your arm so you I, i've seen patients on, on that I, I treated young guys who talk about he ain't got no money or they on a monthly fixed income but yet come in with the brand new like style watches the young cat got the the hat the nice belt buckle and the fresh shoes and so basically what i'm saying is if you want something bad enough it doesn't matter how much you make if you want something bad enough you're going to find some way to get it just like when people go buy you uh, go buy new cars and they say all you need is a thousand dollars or five hundred and you can get this you can drive out the door with it and you people be thinking of who can i think of where i can get the thousand maybe i could uh write a a post check for 500 and and come up with 500 but this is invaluable because when it's your when it's someone's time to go through those doors of a kidney dialysis treatment. This book is going to take you right when you open that door, when you step in that lobby. That's where this book starts from. Okay? That's where it starts from. So, and just like these kids. <laughs> these kids. We, we got them. No one's purchased any. That's okay. This is not my main thing I do is try to peddle these kids. But how many people on dialysis, uh, on hemo, their family or themselves go home and start back bleeding again and, and don't know what to do? They panic. They don't know what to do. This is where these kits come in. Okay, you got the gloves, you got the tourniquet, you got the short seal band-aids, you got the three by fours. You got the pressure gauze tape to wrap around after you bandage yourself up. This, this is important. I've known patients that bled to death at home. Comes with instructions and everything. But in the right time, that will happen. But now education is key. It's key. And I do this to show you that I'm not always out in front of the dialysis clinics bashing them. It's not, and I'm not bashing them. I'm showing you the seriousness of this problem of kidney failure. It's unprecedented of the many clinics and the many people that are now on dialysis than were before in the 80s, in the 90s, in the early 2000s. That's why education is so important in platforms like this and engagement with other people who are dealing with this disease is so critical. It's so critical to the outcome of treatment and the quality of life that one deals with with kidney disease. That's what's so important, the quality of life. 
the outcomes of treatment. Are you getting enough waste out? I had a warrior I talked to today. And she's telling me how she's been experienced low blood pressure, passing out at the clinic. Nobody's around when the machine goes off or when she feel like she's she's going out. She can't find nobody to come and do the interventions. She can't find nobody to come and administer saline to stop the fluid pulling. Now she's passing out, cramping. You can't make this up. But she reaches out to me because she didn't know what's going on. So I asked her, I said, hey, how's your appetite? Have you been eating two to three meals? Hey, Veronica, have you been eating two, three meals a day? Yeah, I've been eating. My appetite. So if you've been eating your dry weight or your target weight or your base weight, all three means the same. They're all interchangeable. It's going to fluctuate. That dry weight, base weight is variable. It's not going to always stay the same. So if you're 58 kilos, 75 or 100 kilos, you go into the hospital and you don't eat food. We know that normally when people go in the hospital, they lose weight. So when you come out, your target weight is not going to be the same as it was before you went in. It's going to be lower. So you may go to dialysis and your target weight 50. You come in at 47. Your target weight may be 75. You come in at 73. Target weight may be 100. You come in at 95 or 96. Right? That's why it's very important that you know your dry weight and know how much weight when you leave the hospital how much weight they should be taking off? How do you assess yourself? Do you got any shortness of breath? Uh, do you got any edema in your hands? Any edema in your ankles? Right? And if you know you haven't gained any weight, you've been reducing your fluid intake, then you know when you go to dialysis, they shouldn't be taking off no three liters, especially if you're below your weight. If you go into the hospital, you come out, you below your dry weight, have them set their machine at one, um, at, at, at one, um, one, one kilo at the minimum. Then you won't be cramping. Then you can see how much you weigh going out and you can reestablish the dry weight, your base weight. You know, a lot of times you don't even see the nephrologist. And the nurse practitioner comes once a week. So who's there for you when they're not there? The charge nurse, maybe some places they they being very attentive to your treatment. But a lot of times they're not. I'm on here now being attentive. I started this live at 8. It's 10 o'clock. Exactly, exactly having culture 1232. Because when you gain weight, you got to raise your dry weight. So if you was 50 and you go on, you say you come in at 54, you know, you'd be like, dang, I gained a lot of weight. But just say you haven't been drinking, but you come in at 54. Like, damn. And then if you don't say nothing, they're going to try because you got four, you know, you're 50. That's the doctor's order. They're going to try to take off four close to it. And that's where they're cramping. And the low BP comes in at. 
and not feeling well and feeling washed out and feeling like, oh my God. That's where all that comes. And they're trying to pull off too much, something that's not there. If you gain weight, readjust your dry weight by half a kilo or maybe one kilo. So if you're 50, you come in 54 and you find yourself leaving out at 52, you start cramping and you go, you leave out at 52 or 51.5 and your blood pressure like 120 or something like that. Then you know that your dry weight is not 50 anymore because you cramp, your pressure drop, leaving out at 51.5. We may have to give you a little extra fluid at the end of treatment. You go away. Now you're 51.5. That's your new dry weight. That's your new dry weight. Okay. Then you just have them take you to 51.5. You're in charge of your treatment. Don't. That's what I'm saying. You can't wait till the nephrologist or the nurse practitioner to come in to change your dry weight. That's what they may tell you at the clinic. Oh, the doctor got to change your target weight. The doctor got to do it. Well, until that happens, I want you to set me for 51.5. I want you to set me for this. Don't take me to 50. Don't take me to 75. Because that's when you're going to start um, getting into trouble, right? And if you don't say nothing, the technician's not going to say nothing to you. It's not like, like I told the person earlier, it's not like a lot of these people, when you come in, you tell them your weight, they're going to flip back and, and, and look at your previous treatments and tell you, hey, you know you left out at uh, 51.5 last treatment, your pressure was good, and day before... Your last treatment before that, you left out at this and that, and you didn't feel too well. And you ain't going to get a lot of that people being attentive and in tune to your treatment to work with you so you know you can have great outcome. It's get them on, get them off. Hey, that's right, heaven culture. Absolutely. 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 Thank you, man. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you for all those comments. Um, Because you know, you know, ain't nobody going to flip back and say, hey, did you know you left all that this and that? These new age technicians, nothing against them. Um, You know about the millennials and no disrespect to millennial. If you're a millennial on here, you know, I'm just from old school, born in the 60s, baby boomer, no disrespect, but Man, in dialysis, you got people in there, man, that just don't give a damn. I mean, they selfish. It's all about I, me. It ain't all, it's not about we, a team, nothing. They, it's, 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 it's crazy. And especially with the shortage, there's no camaraderie. No nothing. Okay. Um uh what now? <laughs> um come on, let me see. Let me end this show. Let me see something right quick. Let me see, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret, so much for um talking about my book. Steve's book explained to me what the doctors and dialysis did not explain to me. Get Steve's book. It prepared me for dialysis. Thank you, Margaret, for that comment. And that's why I wrote it. Because the doctors, they don't talk about what you're going to endure or go through in dialysis. They just give you the um, generic and, and as far as Rena deal, you can, it won't hurt, but I would just monitor what your KT over V and you are, are before you take it and after you take it to see if it's been effective. Okay. And then let me see your other question. I mean, 
You got my attention. I will stay connected. I need to learn all I can. Steve's book breaks down all the information step by step by step. You must purchase this book. It's my helper. Thank you, Morgan. I'm working on my second book right now. Uh, I'm on uh, chapter five. And once I get off the live, I got to start writing because I've been slacking up. But I got to finish this by Thanksgiving. But the second book is called The Dialysis Patient Handbook of Information. And it goes deeper into this. It goes deeper into what I'm talking about. Uh, emergency preparedness, infection control, access, uh, hospitalization, everything. And Miss Kathy, hey, Miss Kathy, she said, it's hard to, is it hard to do PD? No, no, it's not. Miss Kathy hasn't started dialysis yet. She said, I'm so thankful. Still not on dialysis, Steve. I am so thankful. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Kevin, he says, will be five years for me, no infection. I love PD uh, and was always very careful. Okay, let me see what Sean says. I want to, got to acknowledge these comments. I'm set up for eight to 10 hours at night while I sleep. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Kevin said, Nine hours per day. Okay, I had four surgery to set my catheter. Wow. Four surgeries to set the catheter. And that normally doesn't happen. And uh, I'm glad Kevin, you know, stuck in there. I do four exchanges every night. Sean says, I got B. I'm from Westland, Michigan. Okay. Thank you, Sean, for why I just got a PD catheter put in yesterday. Oh, my God. See, this is why I'm saying that's why these lives are so important. Thank you, Sean, for sharing. He said, I just got a PD catheter put in yesterday in a lot of pain. My transplanted kidney was at 11%. I'm sorry I didn't see this till 830. You can always go back and watch the replay, Sean. Um, on YouTube or Steve the Kidney Nurse. And also follow my pages on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. You know, and again, if you got any uh, questions, Sean, uh, I don't know if you've seen this. You can hit my uh, email, urbanhealthnurseeducator at gmail.com. It is easier. Absolutely. So thank you for joining, Sean. God bless you. Candace says, people are scared to face the reality of kidney disease. It's nothing to be scared of. This disease can be managed. Absolutely. And I think I saw this one. Thank you for your support, uh, Steve. Yeah. Oh, Miss Miss Anita, uh, Miss uh, Anita out of uh, mcdonough or near mcdonough it was the best treatment modality for me i had more freedom oh candace talks about home dialysis exactly i was out having a blast today bowling eating and playing games now i'm back now i'm about to hook up to dialysis entertainment goes away the ckd does it that's what i'm saying all the entertainment on, on TikTok and stuff, you can see it, but the disease doesn't go away. That's why these are very important. It seems like everyone does peritoneal dialysis. It's getting that way. It's getting that way. And guys, if you're on Facebook, you can uh, support me by sending stars. <laughs> stars help me earn money, what, a penny <laughs> to make more content. But the pennies add up, but still. Um, but yeah. Uh, oops. Oh, you too. I'm definitely looking at your videos regarding PD. Yeah, I only got, like, this is the first video I did long on 
peritoneal. Um, I don't have a peritoneal cath or anything like that. This is just one of uh, several treatment options. Kind of doing the series. Uh, one day this week, I want to talk about home hemo. Well, another day we'll talk about in center. And it's just to let people know what's going on. So if they fall in this category, they know what option they may want to take and they know the good and the bad about it. And now they can make an informed decision on what treatment option. I'm not going to like sugarcoat it so you can just go to one treatment. I'm not going to tell you all the good things about PD to steer you there and not tell you the bad things. I'm not going to tell you all the bad things about um, heat incident and hemo without telling you the good part about incident and hemo. Same with transplant. I'm not going to tell you all the good things about transplant without telling you the risk, okay, about transplant. Because there's risk and benefits to all the treatment options. It just depends which one fits into your lifestyle. It just depends on which one fits in your lifestyle. You may not, you may be a hermit. You may not want to socialize with people. If that's the case, stay at home and do PD or stay at home and do home hemo. You may want to be a person that socialized. Um, the, the bad thing, well, there's really no bad thing about PD. But the down part, like say if somebody has a bunch of animals or pets, say someone is not uh, very meticulous when it comes to uh, hygiene, uh, say if someone lives in a home that may be, uh, that may be hoarder, you know, you may be hoarding, okay, that's the downside of it. And they're just... Um, the infection part is mainly the big downside of it is the peritonitis um, and the scar tissue. Uh, you know, if you had a hernia in the past, you may not be able to get this. Some people still are able to get it if they had a hernia, some not. But I'm just saying there's not like a lot of disadvantages to CAPD, but it's just not everybody can do it because, you know, whether they have scar tissue build up or they don't have enough room in the house or maybe literacy problems or they just can't learn it. But yeah. Hey, Prophet Joe, thank you, sir, for joining. God bless you. I, I, I love your stuff, your insight and perspectives that you uh that you post on facebook uh prophet joe so thank you for joining my live all right i want to shut down the uh youtube and oh mark is you still on okay now i won't shut it down if mark is still on i'm not going to shut down because margaret may not be on TikTok. so um so yeah guys yeah, it, it can be. I'm sure it was intimidating at first, uh, Big Red. And uh, did you want to join the live now or uh, at another time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, having culture. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Let's see. All right. Um, send me a quick invite. We do about five minutes. I've been on like two and a half hours. You get two weeks deliveries and still it's quite. Yeah, that's that's a large uh, um, shipment. Let me see. I don't kind of thing, but I don't see it where I can send you.
Uh, oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, Big Red, let me see. I can't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend uh, you driving. Hey, Jared. Hey, Jared. Jared, that's my buddy, guys. Jared A. Brown, uh, host of the Warriors Quest show and also kidney advocate. Um, hey, Big Red, I'm going to come back on tomorrow at 7 Eastern time and talk about something. I want you to join my live tomorrow, please. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I want to talk about something pertaining to dialysis that's very interesting. Uh, guys, Jared A. Brown, host of the Warriors Quest show. If you dealing with dialysis and you're looking for a transplant, reach out to Jared A. Brown, kidney advocate. Doctor put me on for sugar and kidney. I never heard, that must be a new man. Let me um, look that up right quick. That must be a new uh, oral glycemic medication. Hold on, M, M, P, A, G. Okay, here it go. Here it go. Oh, and is that in Tresto? Jardiance tablets. Wait a minute. Jardiance. Is it Jardiance? Is that the uh, trade name? Jardiance. It's for type 2 and heart failure. What is Jardiance? Jardiance is a prescription medicine to used to lower blood sugar along with diet and exercise in adults with type 2 diabetes reduce the risk of cardiovascular death in adults with type 2 diabetes who also have known cardiovascular disease are you dealing with any heart issues uh reduce the risk of cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure in adults with heart failure when the heart cannot pump enough blood to the rest of the body. Jardiance is not for people with type 1 diabetes. It may increase their risk of diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a increased ketones in the blood or urine. Jardiance is not for use to lower blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes who have severe kidney problems because it may not work. Again, Jardis is not for use to lower blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes who have, who have severe kidney problems because it may not work. So, you know, when you're taking these medicines, Okay, I just typed it in. Read up on the product information when you're taking these medicines that these doctors prescribe because this medicine, the side effect, one of the side effects is um, dehydration. Okay, and then that can dry out your kidneys. And you don't want to get dehydrated that caused your creatinine levels to shoot up and to dry. Oh my God, it can dry your kidneys and make the condition worse. That's why a lot of people don't like prescription meds because they have other side effects and they do this the natural way. So this medicine, Jardiance, that's used to lower the blood sugar, type two diabetes, one of the side effects is dehydration. It can cause, just like all effects, this one in particular can cause some people to become dehydrated, the loss of body water and salt. Dehydration may cause you to feel dizzy, faint, lightheaded, or weak. 
especially when you stand up. Sudden worsening of kidney function has happened in people who are taking Jardions. I'm reading the information right to you. Sudden, sudden worsening. And this is like with other medicines like um, metformin and these other oral glycemic medicines. You got to read the product literature. So it says sudden worsening of kidney function has happened in people who are taking Jardions. You may be at a higher risk of dehydration if you take medicines to lower your blood pressure, including water pills, diuretics, are on a low salt diet, have kidney problems, are 65 years of age or older. Talk to your healthcare provider about what you can do to prevent dehydration, including how much fluid you should drink on a daily basis. And if you reduce the amount of food or fluid you drink, if you are sick or cannot eat or start to lose liquids from your body from vomiting, diarrhea, or being in the sun too long. This medicine, if you're a female, can also cause serious urinary tract infections. Serious urinary tract infections can occur in people taking Jardians and may lead to hospitalization. Tell your healthcare provider if you have symptoms of a urinary tract infection, such as a burning feeling when passing urine, a need to urinate, often or right away, pain in the lower part of your stomach or pelvis, or blood in the urine. Sometimes people also may have a fever, back pain, nausea, or vomiting. This is another side effect this medicine can cause, low blood sugar. Also, necrotizing facilitis. You may say, like, Steve, what the hell is necrotizing facilitis? Remember that eating flesh bacteria? That's what it is. A rare but serious bacterial infection that causes damage to the tissues under the skin in the area between and around your anus and genitals. It can cause that around your anus or genital. Or also called the perineum. This bacteria infection has happened in women and men who take Jardians and may lead to hospitalization, multiple surgeries, and death. Seek medical attention immediately if you have fever or feeling very weak, tired, or uncomfortable, malaise, and you develop any of the following symptoms in the area between and around your anus and genitals, pain or tenderness, swelling, and redness of skin, arrhythmia, But it also can cause vaginal yeast infection. Talk to your healthcare provider if you have vaginal odor, white or yellowish, yellowish vaginal discharge. Discharge may be lumpy or look like cottage cheese and or vaginal itching. Yeast infection of the penis, swelling of an uncircumcised penis may develop, may pull back the skin around the tip of the penis. Talk to your healthcare provider if you have redness, itching, 
or swelling of the penis, rash of the penis, foul smelling discharge from the penis, and or pain in the skin around the penis. The most common side effects of jardians include urinary tract infections and yeast infections in females. These are not all the possible side effects of jardians. So I pulled this up because someone mentioned that the doctor prescribed 10 milligrams to help with diabetes because they have kidney issues. And we know that a lot of these medicines can even hurt you and increase the kidney problem. I'm not saying that M, I can't pronounce that word, that medicine. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just this is the information, product information. And it's just, it tells you what it is. Uh, it gives you important safety information about the medicine. And it tells you that it can cause serious side effects. And the ones that I read, ketoacidosis, dehydration, serious serious urinary tract infection, low blood sugar, necrotizing fasciitis, uh, vaginal yeast infection, yeast infection of the penis, allergic reaction, and just other stuff, man, that the doctor just write the prescription and they don't go over that information with you. And you may have something, it may not agree with you, take the medicine, it may mess you up. So I'm going to um, definitely come back on here tomorrow. I'm going to find a great topic to talk about, maybe another treatment option like in center. And 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 because we know we got a lot of people to go to to go to in center, but there's more to it. And center that you know, if you go to in center dialysis outpatient, there's more to it than you know. Take it from somebody who's been in the game 37 years, work with the Vita up to 19 years, off and on, work for Facenius about the same amount of time, off and on, mainly both companies simultaneously. Um, when you say obstructed like a stone, in what aspect are you are you talking about? Um, but kidney stones can cause obstruction, and that's why it's good to drink a lot of water. Cranberry juice, that's where that comes in. Cranberry juice ain't going to reverse no kidney disease or stop the damage that's been done. But it's a good antioxidant and it's good to help the formation of kidney stones along with a lot of water. Yeah, guys, follow, follow me, follow my Facebook, YouTube for great information. Like I said, I've been on here about Two hours and 35 minutes. Again, you're not going to get any registered nurse. All right. And I didn't take that back. You may have someone. Okay. But I haven't seen any registered nurse. No nurse from TikTok. And kidney that works in kidney disease. On here. Like this. Sharing information. Two, two and a half hours. You would think, I don't have no relationship right now because I know 
what it takes to build a relationship with a woman, develop it, culture it. But my time doesn't allow that. They say when you find somebody, you make the time. But every time I try that, there's always been a problem with someone. I can't stop my passion. That's why when the time is right, God will bring somebody in my life who will coexist with me and help me along this journey. This is serious to me. I would probably end up dying doing this. You know, not get out of it. I had to, like I mentioned the other day, I had an opportunity. And I still do. I got my life insurance license. Tried to do that, you know, for, I mean, I still got the license. And if this thing doesn't work, I could always go <laughs> sell life insurance. Right? But I found myself, like, I put it all in, like, get my life insurance license in the different states, but I couldn't stay away from what I'm doing, the education of this disease, because it affects so, it impacts so many people. I'm always seeing the clinics. And then when I see the clinics, it remind me of all the kidney warriors that are dealing with this disease, all the people that this has impacted. So I can't just stop. I just can't turn off a switch like that. You know, I it, I can't. Um, oh, let me see something right quick. So I'm gonna be talking about it a lot. Let me just give you an insight before I get off. Thank you, Morgan, for hanging in there. Uh, I'm going to be, man, I got information we're going to be talking about, about in center, especially like a lot of warriors may have seen this, right? This is an emesis basin, right? And this is what we give warriors that feel like they're going to vomit, all right, at the in center. Your clinic should have these. Right, they should have these, and you know, a lot of warriors when they feel like they get ready to throw up, lick the techno so they can give you one of these to have it on your table. So if you do get ready to throw up, you don't vomit all over your clothes. You can you put these. This is how it goes with this this part, like this. So you can throw up in it, and not like this. But it's like this, so you can throw up in it. And on the inside of this, see, Margaret? On the inside of this, it got lines and the amount, like, they're supposed to record how much you vomited. When you use one of these, it, you know, look at that patient vomited 100 cc's of undigested food. Yeah, some, some places give patients a trash bag. That's so ghetto, man. I'm telling you. You know, some people, they, 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 they take the bag around your neck, the red bag, and then you got this big bag hanging down to the floor. And, I mean, it just looks ridiculous. But sometimes we, we may need to, if you can't find nothing fast enough, i seen them put the trash can up to somebody. That's what I'm saying. If you had these around, accessible, you get it. Patient, if you're in the vicinity and you know, that's what I'm saying. Monitoring and, 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 and patient monitoring is so important because if the staff has gone away and you feel like you got to vomit and you can't hold it, you don't want to aspirate on your vomit. That may send you in cardiac arrest or you, you may get pneumonia. But they got lines in here with numbers, and you say, um, you know, you vomit, you just take a look, you know, not being gross or anything, but you give it to me. Okay. You know, when you write your notes, 
you're, you're supposed to write what happens during the treatment. Some staff don't. You vomit, they throw it away, they go on about their business. They don't document it. You're supposed to document it so we know what happened during treatment, right? So this is this is called Emesis Basin. Emesis Basin. Also, I'm sure a lot of warriors seen this. If you come into dialysis, guys, and if you're short of breath, and I mean, really, if you're short of breath, right, ask for some O2. Okay, we got oxygen cannulas, right? And the way this goes on is not this way where this part, this part right here is pinching your nose. It goes this way. Okay, the part going up like that, it, it goes like this. And this right here pulls down and goes around your ears. And this part right here, you pull up to tighten it up. And that's how it goes on. Right? And now you got this hooked up to the O2. And you ask them, you know, tell them to cut it on. Put it on maybe two to three liters. And they're supposed to document that. Patient requests oxygen, oxygen administered via nasal cannula at two or three liters per nasal cannula. Okay. So if you're short of breath, ask them for some oxygen. If you're chronic shortness of breath, you may want to take this home with you. It'll put it in a, a bag and bring it back and forth, right? Also, we got this. This is the island dressing if you got a catheter. Okay, this is just one of many. Some places like the Vita use just the gauze and tape. Gauze and tape. Tape like this. And the gauze. Tape and gauze. Instead of having what's called an island dressing, And basically, you guys seen it. Looks like this. You open it up from the back. Like that. And you put it over the catheter. I'm sorry. You're covering the catheter. Go like this. Wait a minute. Hold up. Shit. Hold up. All right, go like, you know what I'm trying to get at. You know what I'm trying to get at, but the, the, the dressing goes over 
like that. And you got these two hanging out. And then they cover this with some gauze. They wrap it up and cover it with gauze. But this is a lot better. This is a lot better than two by two and tape. It, it, you know, even though I don't like the cloth part, I like the tegaderm where you get the clear, it, 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 it kind of adheres to the skin. It doesn't peel off easy like these. You see how, how this crumbled up when I tried to.
if they got a if they got a, a, a needle, how I take off, stop the pump, I disconnect the arterial line from the needle, I clamp, clamp the arterial bloodline, hook a 10 cc syringe on here with saline, flush it, leave the syringe on, take the arterial line and connect it to the administration set, the IV line, keep the um, the the line going to the from the IV, clamp it and open the sidearm, connect the arterial line to it, unclamp it, cut the blood pump on. Now you're rinsing back the arterial line through the circuit and returning the blood through the venous where you already flushed the arterial line. Some people take flush the arterial line, squeeze the bag, clamp it, and then cut the pump on and rinse the venous back. When you got a catheter, it's the same way. Disconnect the arterial line, flush it, return the blood back, clamp, disconnect, flush the venous, 10 cc saline, and then you're supposed to put two cc's or the length that's on this catheter, okay? You see those numbers right there? Wait a minute, it's upside down. I'm gonna show y'all guys. Wait a minute, you see those numbers right there? Like 1.7 in Facebook? Let me get this straight. You see that 1.7? That's how much heparin you're supposed to put in. You see that 1.7? Right there on the side of the catheter. A lot of patients don't see this or know it, but 1.7 is how much heparin we put in the catheter. So for instance, we just round it off. We just round it off to two cc's. We just put two cc's in there, but 1.7 would be right here. That would be one, wait a minute. That's 1.6. 1.7 will be where that top of that black stopper is. 1.7 cc's will be where that black, the top of that black stopper is. And like I said, it says it on the side of the catheter, 1.7 arterial, 1.7 venous. So it'll be 1.7 cc is a heparin which is this amount right here 1.7 but we normally go ahead and just put two in round it off and put two cc's in or 1.7 whichever floats your boat so all right so with that being said, guys, I'm getting ready to shut it down. Oh, I'm sorry, Margaret. That probably uh, had microphone off. Wow. Sorry about that. Damn. That sound. Hey, Aaron Wheeler. What's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. But, uh, but anyway, guys. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Like I said, it's almost been three hours I've been talking. But uh, thank you, uh, David Rollins, for joining Margaret Aaron on uh, TikTok and Facebook. My apologies for no sound. I must have hit the my my mic and, and cut it off when I was doing my uh props and everything so my apologies i gotta watch out of hitting this top speaker because when you it goes off so my apologies guys so sorry um 
because you probably missed a lot of great information during that sound out. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too good. Yeah, I got to check Clubhouse out. Uh, I've never been on that platform, and uh, I don't think tonight would be the night that I would try it. Uh, but uh, I'm going to check it out, and I may do something on Clubhouse. But I just need to get the information out to the people that matters the most, that find themselves in this unfortunate situation, and that can use this information to 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 have better outcomes at treatment and 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 live the best quality life possible dealing with this disease so um thank you uh janine i appreciate you i'll be back on tomorrow night i know i'm not gonna be as long as i am tonight because monday i gotta get up at three in the morning to go to work <laughs> that's how this uh this, this business is is early early mornings and late nights okay that's how it is in dialysis so um tomorrow i'm gonna be on at seven o'clock p.m i don't know what the topic's gonna be but i make sure there'll be something very very interesting okay um uh george survivor uh what's your question uh before i get out of here contact me and let's try a clubhouse. Lisa Thompson, you're on Facebook. All right, send me a um a a a a um a messenger, Lisa. Send me a messenger, and uh, I'll definitely look into that. I have a question your question i definitely answer i will be there hey jared what's clubhouse like that's that's my my uh uh media go-to guy uh here yeah, i know it my let me see my husband kidney working at 27 percent 27% is, oh, we're going to be coming out. I got to order some more of these GFR cards, right? And it has, uh, let me put the screen down. Oh, shit. All right, sorry about that. Got these GFR cards going to be coming out with. They got the GFR on there. So at 27%, your, your husband fall at stage four. That's 29 to 15%. I'm so, Yeah, to 15% in stage four. And you got one, two, three, four, and five. And it gives you the reference range of, of the number, you know, of the disease. So stage one is from... Uh, is less than uh 90%. Uh stage 2 is which I have stage 2 is from 60 to 89. My GFR is 80. Well, I don't know, could have went up. I'm going to get my blood work done uh in another week or so. Let's see what I've done. Stage three, which is the critical point. Nine out of 10 people have stage three and don't even know it. That's from 30 to 59%. Stage four is from 29 to 15%. And anything lower than 15%, you're in stage five kidney disease. And then that's considered when you go on dialysis that's considered end stage once you pass five and go on dialysis they consider that end stage renal disease you're at the end of the stages now you have to implement some form of treatment therapy
Yes. Yes. Uh, Lisa Thompson, thank you. Um, I'm not sure if we know each other on Facebook, but I really, really appreciate you commenting, engaging. Thank you so much. And Lisa says, start looking. If you're on dialysis and your GFR uh, is starting to get low, almost hitting that fifth stage, she says, start looking for your living donor early. You can get a voucher to use as soon as you're at ESRD greater than 20%. A voucher, that's, oh my God, this is what I'm saying. That's why it's so important for people to come on and, 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 and network and communicate who's dealing with the same issues. It's just like, again, like NA or AA or any other type of group where everybody's dealing with the same issue. It may be in different stages or uh, different phases, but everyone is dealing with the same issue that well, what help one person could help another, what help that person could help somebody else. And that's how we get this information. Out. Hopefully this information on PD gave someone insight and able to help them. Maybe it's just one person, maybe two, three, I don't know. It's Steve the Kidney Nurse on Facebook and, and YouTube, Steve the Kidney Nurse. Oh, okay. Yes. And Lisa says, you don't need to be on dialysis in order to be stage five. Absolutely. Less than. Thank you so much. Okay. Microsite. Oh, wow. Now, if you're watching this and even on TikTok, if you're name Lisa Thompson, I'm sure we may be a Facebook friends. I'm not sure. Uh, but she does Michael site coach. But I bring her up because she sounds like that she can assist or help anyone who may be looking for a kidney donor with the National Kidney Registry. So, man, the networking is so, so important. I help my clients with writing and sharing their story. We need more people like Lisa Thompson. And Margaret says, I am looking for a living donor. I've been on dialysis for a month. <sighs> See? Yeah. Margaret, we want we gotta get you on the Warriors Quest show if you haven't already been on there and contact people such as Lisa Thompson, who coach and help people write this story and find a donor. So please reach out to Lisa Thompson on, on Facebook um, and see what she can do to help you get your story and find a living donor. And with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Thank you so much. It's been three hours that I've been on. We'll be back on tomorrow, 7 p.m. I don't know the topic. I will. Just watch out for my page. And you'll see a video out saying what the topic's going to be. I want to put a live, one of those pink live countdowns on. Please uh, tag that um, um, so you can be waiting for the show, be notified. But I definitely will be on tomorrow at 7 p.m. to discuss. I don't know, it may be cramping. It, it could be anything. Um, but it's going to be conducive and important to Kidney Warriors. Um on dialysis and off dialysis. So with that being said, uh, oh, okay, okay. Okay, she got a kidney four years ago. That's Lisa Thompson. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining YouTube and Facebook. I'm going to end that live right now. Guys, I'll see you later. Miss Thompson, please reach out to me uh, to tell me about Clubhouse. And I'm going to learn about it and see how it could be beneficial to me as well. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you guys on Facebook, the Figo, the Figo Initiative, and Steve the Kidney Nurse Facebook page. See you guys on the next on on the other side tomorrow. All right. Take care. Peace and blessings. Oh, let me put my intro out there.
I mean, my um, shut it down. All right, guys, take it easy. Peace and blessings. Around, don't get caught in the mind fit The fuel to the fire, ain't nobody can stop it It's a trouble in my city, but you know I'm across it Got a 40 on my hip and I'm liable to spark it Throw down these hits, my click is indivisible I aim, you duck, I squeeze, now you invisible I'm not afraid of getting physical All these different chemicals are fogging up my visuals Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we notorious, we ain't no runners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Yo, we some warriors, they ain't caught gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Put on my strap, put on my beat, put on my map, put on my team Take out every motherfucker in between, know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my rap, better my name Killing rappers on my hang, I'm about to chase for the fame Never thought I would, now I'm running